post a tweet, it goes whew, <laughs> whew, <laughs> to the back, right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Dummy Codes, where we talk about coding, we do some coding, and um, huh? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a roadmap, a roadmap to being a software developer. You know, don't think I'm making fun of you guys, but with all the resources that are out there, I still get questions about where do I begin, where do I start. And I know for a fact you guys might feel dumb or like stuck right now, but we've all been there. I've been there. I've been at that stage where I'm just clicking on every link and seeing everyone's opinion. You should start with Python. You should start with JavaScript. You should start with this and that and that. It's a lot. It's to the point where if you get stuck in all that and you try to jump around and learn too many things without fully understanding, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to still be at the beginner stage because you're going to be accidentally playing yourself. And that could happen complete accident so so today what we're going to be doing is stealing complete information but as programmers like to call it refactoring <laughs> but today i'm going to be talking about a complete clear path for people who want to become programmers right i wish i found this early on and i or i wish it was made early on but it's from free code camp if you guys don't know what free code camp is please do yourself a favor and just look it up check out that site i found that site years ago when it was literally in its first week and they had lessons and i was like this is so cool you could get your certificate people have gotten jobs from there it's completely free now it's grown and grown and grown and i think they have a youtube channel with 1.5 million subscribers i think that they they added way more information on there than i could have ever expected so if you really can't afford a boot camp or anything like that go on free code camp the path to becoming a web developer what do you need to learn what do you need to understand here are the things to understand there is so free code camp so free code camp made a entire diagram of you know the path you could take the things you might need to learn if you do take a certain path and i think it's very cool i'm going to link it in the description so that you guys could see it you guys could learn from it, you guys could you know get more detail than you will from this video but we're just gonna overview it even talk about what path that i took personally first thing you want to do is choose your path right just like the diagram says i'm going to be looking back and forth that. First thing you want to do is choose your path. You want to go front end or back end. Front end, how I describe to my friends who don't really care about coding, but I'm talking about it. I'm like, front end is the stuff that you see, all the pretty stuff, all the interactive stuff when you click a button, blah, blah, blah. Back end is the stuff you don't see, like your database and the database where you hold information like passwords and usernames and all that stuff. That's back end, right? Front end and back end interact. You could be a full stack web developer though, which is you could do front end and back end. You know, there are some jobs where you just work strictly on the front end and there's some jobs that you work strictly on the back end. You could do both. For the sake of this video, let's say you just went on the front end side, right? Front end side, you're gonna be at that point where you're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are just the first things that the internet or Google or anything is gonna throw at you. You know, they're like, just, just learn this. And if you could get past this, then we'll talk about the rest of the stuff. That's just how, this is how it is. Who hasn't who hasn't been suggested JavaScript as a new developer? Who? And then you go down to your package managers where you pick, you know, NPM or Yarn. I personally use Yarn. Don't ask me why. It's just what I do. Um, I used to have a point where here's a fun tip. Don't use NPM and Yarn at the same time because those that, that will break things and you don't even know. You think, oh, things are working. They don't. I had a project where I had to start all over because we couldn't find what the problem is and I just had to refactor my code and use one just specifically, which is my bad. So if you're going to pick one, only work with that one for that project. Don't mix them around. Then you have CSS preprocessors, right? What are those? <laughs> CSS preprocessors are less... SAS. What else is there? Post CSS. Don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> the whole point of a preprocessor is just to kind of make your life kind of easier versus just writing in a normal CSS file. Uh, the preprocessors, the pre, I, this is a lot of S's. It helps, it helps your life. All right. You, you write less and get more. Yes. I made that up. Perfect. So CSS frameworks, if you're like me, these come in handy because I hate designing things. I really do. So there's things like Bootstrap, which I'm sure some of you guys have heard of, or maybe you haven't. There's also Materialize CSS. I've used that one time. Uh, Bulma, Somatic UI. Basically, if you want to make things look pretty, someone else or some other company has done the job 
And say if you want to make a button look pretty, right? Instead of trying to sit there for an hour trying to make this button look pretty, go on Bootstrap's website, find a button design that you like and find a way to integrate that into your code and boom, it's done because someone already made that for you. That's what that is, right? After doing some more, we're just gonna scroll past a bunch of these things because right now it doesn't really matter. <laughs> when working with web development, you're gonna have to pick a framework. Typically a job's gonna be working with a framework. So it could be React, it could be Angular, it could be Vue or Vue. Again, something I hear about, I, I read about. Don't know what it is until I'm curious about it enough to learn it. That's when I'll learn it. But for now, we're going to ignore it. But right now, for example, I work with React. So while working with React is also Redux, if you go look at that, the way I was taught, the way I understand it is you use Redux when you want to be able to scale your application, right? So you use normal React when you're just, you know, making a little sum, you know, you're making a little sum sum, right? But then you gotta use Redux when you're like, oh shit, like people are actually using my website. Let me make this, <laughs> let me let me get it ready. You know, let me make this cleaner. And, and that's what I understand Redux for. Admittedly, I need to get better at Redux because I know when I go into a full stack job, I'm gonna need to, you know, be obviously working with Redux. Unless they don't, unless they just don't care and they're like, nah, we'll work a just bare bones react, it's okay. Then we talk about testing your applications, right? I use Jest once. <laughs> I'm not much of a tester because I've never had to make something that I know is gonna go out into the real world, but I know when I make my personal projects and I give it to you guys to, you know, test for me and like make sure things work and make sure it runs smoothly because I want you guys' greatest opinion, I'm gonna need to learn how to test my code. But yeah, I worked with testing for like a month. I get it. At small scale, some of these things are harder to understand. Why am I doing this? What's the point, right? Because it's frustrating. You're like, you're learning something so complicated or sometimes so frustrating. And you're just like, why would I need to do this in one scenario? But later on in life, when your boss tells you to do it, you do it, you know? But when you get to somewhere where you're working, um, they're not gonna just deploy some code without it ever being tested in any type of scenario. They're not just gonna be like, oh, it looks nice. Everything works, cool, let's put it up. Nah, it's, it needs to be ran through a couple eyes and a couple tests. In terms of roadmaps, that's kind of just the gist of the front end, right? When writing back end code, there are a lot of different languages you can use because that's what this thing is saying. I know Python and JavaScript. <laughs> in terms of this, again, I have no shame in saying that I'm literally reading off a screen. In terms of this, there is Elixir, Scala, Erlang. I know I'm gonna say something wrong and someone's gonna correct me, just let it go. Let it go. Clo Closure, Haskell, Java, .NET, Python, Ruby, PHP, Node.js, TypeScript, which is optional, Golang, and Rust, right? Don't know if there's more, but that's what's on the screen, right? What I've done before, if I was using Django, I write with Python, um, cause Django is in Python. Node.js is obviously in JavaScript. I guess to give you guys like a little bit more that's not on this, is that on this? I don't like the backend one. The backend one is kind of dusty. I don't like this. I don't like this roadmap. Then you're gonna have to pick a relational, a, a database. You know, there's Postgres SQL, that, which is what I've used. Um, there is MySQL, Maria database, MS, MS SQL. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. I mean, if you think about backend, I want you guys to think about it like this, right? In terms of Twitter, on Twitter, what do we do, right? What do we do? Look at your timeline. Your timeline, it's getting information. So you need to get requests for all those tweets, right? Again, we're overviewing this and this is not a tutorial. We need a post. We're posting things, right? So every time you post a tweet, it goes whew, <laughs> whew. <laughs> To the back, right? And then someone else is gonna see that tweet. So you you wanna be able to send information and get information, right? What about on YouTube comments now, how you're able to edit? You can make a put request. A put request lets you edit whatever, boom, right? Then there's the delete. The delete request lets you delete things, right? Boom, done. Fastest explanation I could give you. Then while you're in the back end, you're gonna have to learn about, you know, authentication, you know, tokens. God damn. So it's a list. I know I just kind of breezed through the back end, but I just want you guys to understand that there are so many things to learn. There is a path that you could take, you know? I know sometimes you guys are gonna feel like you're mindlessly Googling and sometimes it's gonna be hard and frustrating because you're gonna be like, what do I need to Google? Like, yes, Google is there. It's Google is a great service, but 
what am I supposed to type into Google? Sometimes you just don't know what to type in. Sometimes you just gotta spend the extra hours trying to figure things out. And that's just the case, you know? That's just life. And that's just part of learning. Some You're not gonna learn things in an hour or two every time. Sometimes it's gonna take you a day to learn something that took someone else 10 minutes. Sometimes things are gonna take you a longer time to grasp, but the more research you do, the more reading you do, the more YouTube videos you watch, um, you kind of get to put a picture of how things work. And that's what I want you guys to be able to do. Real quick, I want to apologize about my last video. Not my last video, but I made a video about, you know, the best boot camp, um, which I genuinely believe is the best boot camp. But I didn't want you guys to walk away from that thinking you still have to, like, go to this boot camp. There's so many resources out there every day being added, and it's so cool and amazing. At the end of the day, it's all about your dedication. You know, motivation is cool. And I'm going to make a video about motivation right after this. Motivation is cool and all that, but it's all about the dedication you put towards learning. I went to a boot camp because I knew I have... I'm like this. I won't be able to sit down for a year, try to teach myself. I needed someone to tell me, this is what's gonna need to get done. This is what you need to learn. I'm like, cool. You know, I could have Googled all this stuff. Yes, for sure, but I didn't. That's just the path that I went down on, but doesn't mean that's the path you guys also had to go down on. With all that being said, please look at the link down below. Make sure to read up on that. If you're feeling lost, make sure to, you know, like and subscribe, which I'd really, really appreciate. I'll see y'all later. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope my sound doesn't sound like trash. I'll see y'all in the next in the next video. Bye. Bye bye bye.